as I have said before, liberals fall into one of two groups. Either they want to be in control. Doesn't matter how bad their idea is, they are going to be in control and they are going to push forward anyway. And then the other group of liberals are the group that they don't necessarily want to be in control, but they want to be controlled. They want somebody to tell me what to do, what to say, what to think. Here's a clear example. The backlash is overwhelming when it comes to cancel culture and wokeism. In fact, the vast majority of this country, and it doesn't really matter what their so-called political identity is, the vast majority of this country is rejecting as a collective whole this whole concept of being woke. But that's not going to stop Hollyweird, because in Hollyweird, you can't be woke enough. So, bye-bye to our own industry, and bye-bye to the Golden Globes. To which I say, adios. Did you ever know somebody who seemed to be hell-bent on destroying themselves? I mean, they were their own worst enemy. They didn't have to wait for somebody else to try to do them in or sabotage them. They constantly sabotage themselves. I've known individuals that no matter how good things were going for them, it didn't matter how well life was treating them, it didn't matter how blessed they were, they seemed to figure out a way to snatch victory away and walk in self-defeat and themselves destroy everything good in their lives. Take Hollyweird. These people, they have no concept how good they've got it. As they lecture us from their ivory towers about what we should be doing during the pandemic. We should be staying at home to save lives. We should be doing without and going without because after all, this is, we're all in this alone together bullhock. Now, these people have the kind of bank accounts where they can stay home for days, weeks, months, years at a time. These are the people who live on multi-million dollar estates while they lecture the rest of us about climate change and let's not waste the precious resources of our country and we need renewable resources. Yet they, like Al Gore and, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, they've got houses that have the square footage of small factories and they put out more carbon footprint than most moderate-sized factories with all that they do, their backyards have been turned into wonderlands for their children. They've got their own water amusement parks, their own rides, their own tennis courts and basketball courts and swimming pools and etc., etc., yada, yada, yada. And they can send their undocumented, because they're woke that way, their own undocumented workers off to the store on their behalf to face corona death and retrieve all the things that they need for food and sustenance while they stay home and lecture us on YouTube and Facebook about staying home. Yeah, those people have killed their own industry. They've not only killed it with their overt political ideology to where you even have people like Ben Affleck saying he doesn't care if conservatives or Republicans ever go see any of his movies. Really? Because, you know, we do make up more than half the country. Um, <laughs> Hollywood itself, they see the future in streaming. Doesn't matter that, you know, once in a while people like to leave their house, go somewhere. And going to a movie used to be kind of a nice thing to be able to do. Go out, get some dinner, see a movie, enjoy some popcorn, go home, or go do something else after that. But apparently, Hollyweird has decided they don't care about all of the movie operators across this country. It doesn't matter that these poor guys basically break even on a ticket when it comes to selling admission into the movie, and the only way they make a profit and can pay themselves and pay their staff is to charge us, you know, $5 for a bag of M&Ms at the concession stand. No, no, 
Holly Weird is no longer concerned with that. They don't care about the independent movie operators or the movie operators in general. Stay home. They're killing their own industry. They're, they're pulling back all of their, their movies they were going to release this year. They'll maybe do it next year. And we know it's because Hollywood is in bed with the libs who are running everything, and it's all this corona hogwash nonsense. You know, you guys want to, you know, kill your own industry? I guess that's on you, because most of what you turn out is crapola anyway that nobody wants to watch. Case in point, the Academy Awards. Has anybody watched any of the movies that won anything? And every once in a while, out comes a movie that we go, yes! And that would be uh, the, the new Oderkirk send-up. Um, nobody. Love that movie. Great movie. And they did it right. They started out solely in theaters. Now you can see it in the theater or stream it at home. And where I live, people are going back to the movies. But Holly Weird is not interested in giving them anything to see. Why? Because they've gone woke. And now NBC has said... They will not air the Golden Globe Awards, which, of course, are the awards presented by the Hollywood Foreign Press. And what is the problem? Not enough people of color. Okay? Um, I get so sick and tired of Hollywood lecturing us continually from their little podiums while they're receiving awards, lecturing us on lack of diversity, lack of equal pay. Okay, I have been saying for years, hey... These are your awards events. This is your industry honoring you. It's you guys giving each other trophies. Why are you lecturing us about inequality? Why don't you equalize your own entities? So on that level, apparently Holly Weird is now going to stick to their guns and they're going to make the Hollywood Foreign Press represent what it is that they're preaching to the rest of us. Okay, but apparently they didn't learn a thing from this year's Academy Awards, which had a 58% drop in ratings from the previous year, which had a 50% drop in ratings. Are, are you hearing me? Get woke, go broke. But that is apparently what they are hell-bent on doing. And so now NBC said, we're, we're not going to show it un, un, until you, you start showing diversity in, in who picks these winners. You've got to have diversity among your governing board. Okay, and now Netflix and other streaming services have said they will have nothing to do with the Golden Globes. And this even got Tom Cruise to go ahead and mail back his trophies. And the woke left is going, oh, Tom Cruise. Hey, Tom. You, uh... Give back your trophies. Have, have you given back dignity to the members of your crew that you degraded and screamed and yelled at like a two-year-old child because one of them pulled a mask down to say something to the person next to him because he couldn't understand him through the mask and you went off on a tirade which was recorded for all the world to hear? Have you made things right with them, Tom? Hey, Tom, you're part of a system of belief, the... the off-the-wall occult cult nonsense, which has been exposed for its inhumane treatment of children and its individual followers. H hey, Tom, are you going to come out and apologize for that? Because you've been quite a spokesperson for the Church of Scientology. You going you're going to apologize for that? Of course not. No. <laughs> and hey, Tom, when you were climbing your way up the ladder and trying to be a success and build a career and build your wealth, you didn't mind taking awards from anybody, including Harvey Weinstein. See, I have no respect for you or Matt Damon or Ben Affleck or any of you that were in bed with all of these people that you knew to be absolutely reprehensible, vile individuals, but hey, they held your future in their hands. They could give you movie roles and they could give you money. And now that they have been exposed for what they are and they are out and they are over and they are done, now you take this high moral stand? You are absolutely unbelievable. But now, that's it. All award shows are going to have to pick movies based on political and social content rather than was it a good movie, a good story, and did people like it? And here's the thing. I had toyed with the idea of what if some of us got together 
and actually did an award show the way it should be done? Well, here's the thing. I think we could still do that. But obviously, none of the Hollywood establishment is going to come to that awards event. You won't get any of the directors to come. You won't get any of the actors to come. You won't get any of the studio heads to come. No, no, nay, nay. So I think we should just go ahead and do it anyway. I, I think we should put together a really cool, we could do it in an hour, a one-hour awards presentation show where we pick the right movies, the right TV shows, the right musical scores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can award them. We can just go ahead and on their behalf say, thank you and move on to the next category. But we can make it fun, we can make it entertaining, and we can mail them their trophies, and of course they'll mail them all back because we don't want it from you right-wingers. <laughs> so goodbye Golden Globes. You know, who knew that a year ago, uh, Ricky Gervais was actually not simply giving his final monologue, he was giving the eulogy of the Golden Globes, which... I went ahead into my Afternoon Drive archives and I have pulled up that great classic, the monologue to end all monologues at award shows, Ricky Gervais. Watch and be entertained. You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either, fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. And they've no idea what Twitter is. So I got offered this gig by fax. So let's go out with a bang. Let's have a laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. We're all gonna die soon, and there's no sequel. So, yeah, remember that. Um, but you all look lovely, all doled up. You came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, no, shush. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, okay? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. And her dad was in Wild Hogs. So, lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons, yeah? Look, at this table alone, uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But... <laughs> Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, I love you, man, don't have me whacked. Um, but tonight isn't just about the people in front of the camera. In this room are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly. Leaving Neverland, two popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, <laughs> fifth time. So, we were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people. And I thought, nah, not on my watch. So, maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done Netflix, you win, everything, good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, okay? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. 
Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. But m seriously, most films are awful, lazy, remakes, sequels. I've heard a rumour that there might be a sequel to Sophie's Choice. I mean, that would just be Meryl Streep going, well, it's got to be this one then. <laughs> All the best actors have jumped to Netflix and HBO, you know. And the actors who just do Hollywood movies now do fantasy adventure nonsense. They wear masks and capes and really tight costumes. Their job isn't acting anymore. It's going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids, really. Have we got, a, have we got an award for most ripped junkie? No. No point. We know he'd win that. Um, Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> right. The Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, look. It was. My fact, my, it was great. Uh, long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Um, the world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? <laughs> But Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play. Because she... I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her... <laughs> furball. Furball. She's old school. Um, it's the last time, who cares? <laughs> oh. Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb drama, yeah. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and... So... It's already three hours long. You know, the faux look of shock on people's faces like Tom, Forrest Gump, Hanks. It's worth it. It's worth it. You know what makes this so brilliantly, bitingly funny? It's true, and he nailed these people. He nailed them. He nailed them. He nailed them. Awesome. Hey, that's it for this rant. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up and a like, and let's really piss off YouTube. Share this video around. We've got to build up our subscription base. You see their algorithm keeps pulling us back. I've had so many of you tell me, Pastor Marty, I, I went in and checked my subscription status, and you were right. They cancel it. I didn't cancel it. I went and even checked. I had smacked the bell, and I wanted to receive notification of all of your videos, and I see that they changed it to some of your videos, and I, I didn't do that. They did it. Yeah. Check your subscription status, check your bell status, and go ahead 
copy and paste this link everywhere and anywhere you can, especially your Facebook pages. Let's drive some new people here. Let's build up that subscription rate because we certainly know YouTube's not going to help us.